Today, I'm going to show you how to set up and manage your mixer here in Studio One. All right, let's get started. Every digital audio workstation has some form of a virtual mixer. Now, what you're looking at here is called the editor window. Here under Studio One in the menu, you'll see View, and you'll have some options here. Here's Editor. Now, to see a console, you can use F3 on your keyboard or select it here. And there you go. You can also access it here at the bottom right by toggling it on and off. And at any time, if you wanted to select focus in the mixing view on a specific track, like let's say the lead vocals, I could just double click that track in the editor. And there it is. And the lead vocal, vocal track here has focus now. It goes from dark gray to light gray. All right, so that's just a little bit about that. But what you're looking at here is the virtual mix window. Now, first of all, navigating it is pretty easy, but there is a lot of information here. And we're going to streamline this for you a little bit. First thing you need to know is here in the top left corner of the mix window, you've got an option here to detach this window. Now it's floating. This is a great option if you want to put it on a second monitor. So you can have your all your editing on one uh, screen and your virtual mix console on another screen. We can also make it full screen and there you have it. These are also resizable. I'm selecting and dragging my sends here. You have your inserts, your sends, and then your faders down here. And if you want to make your faders bigger, some long throw faders, there we go. Now to obviously reattach it, up here in the top right, select Reattach. There you go. So that's how you can start viewing your mixer. And by the way, here in my edit window, I want to point out to you resizing this. You have a couple of ways to conform what you're looking at here. Here in the bottom left, we have it set to normal. If I go to minimal, you'll see how small it shrinks all of my tracks. Let's go to small and let's go to normal. Now, if you want to fit everything in your view, just simply choose Alt-Z on a Mac or Option-Z on a PC, and there's everything. Now, if you want to go, obviously, you know, you want to go horizontally and not vertically, here it's down here in the bottom right corner. Here you can zoom in this way. And there's also a little slider knob that I like. So, you know, an easy way to navigate that. Now back to our mixer. Let's open our mixer. And we saw how to detach it and resize it. We also have some options here, some I.O. And what this is going to do is help you create your input and output. Uh, we're using a Quantum 2 here, and you can select through this matrix what inputs you have available on your hardware piece of device and which ones you want to make active. Now with the uh, settings wrench here, this is really important. I want to show you this. You've got options to view a certain number of options that you want to work with. Let's say your input controls. If I select this, you'll see that it's adding input controls corresponding to my hardware so I can control the volume level that I'm recording into Studio One here. You can also show your I.O. connections and your VCA connections and group assignments and even add channel notes, which is a nice way to have it on. You can literally just label this with some quick bites of information regarding what it is you're working on there. All right. Now, what the next one's going to do, small and large, is just expand that for me. And if you leave it like that, next time you activate it here in the mix, it remembers where you had it. I like to see a little bit more of the uh, meters here when it goes up and down. And the same with the narrow and normal view. Here, let's take a listen to that. All right, so that's with the, nor the narrow view. Then you also have your inputs that you can see. These are your active inputs you can um, that are coming in. Again, what your recording levels will be. And you can here have some outputs. Now, I only have one output right here, and this is the master. And then you can have some external devices here. You can add an external device, uh, for example, if you wanted to do a MIDI controller or something. And then your instruments. Now, here are our channel group. We can 
view these. You can activate and deactivate tracks here. Let's go to, let's say my vocal track, which is uh, here, this one right here. If I wanted to take it out of my mix, I can select it right here, this, this dot right next to number 17, and it's removed from the mix. It's not deleted, it's just not part of the mix anymore. So you can add, make tracks active or deactivated this way. All right. So the mixture is really flexible. I love how you can now, you know, resize it. You can also close it in a number of ways, come up to view, say, show me my console view. And there we have it. We can also make it larger again and smaller. So it's very resizable, very customizable, very easy to use, very flexible. Now the mixer itself we'll get into later, but you've got your inserts, your sends, your pans, your solos, your mutes, and your, your levels here. And obviously you can relabel these as such. We live in a really good age. So this is a quick look on how to customize and familiarize yourself with the graphical user interface of the mixer. Next, we'll get into obviously how to start using these options here to begin mixing. Hey everyone and thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Leave your comments below. Like, share and subscribe. Also, don't forget to download that cheat sheet in the description below.